Right, well good morning troops. Now, day off today, me and the dog have been out this morning. We've been out uh, foraging. And I've brought back some wood. There's been some uh, pine trees felled. And I've managed to get some limbs off them that are almost fat wood, very resinous. I wouldn't quite call them fat wood, but they're almost there. Uh, certainly burn well. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, a couple of days ago, while up a tree getting resin, had a bit of an incident, got snagged in the tree and bust me zip but this jacket is well past its best as you can see but I keep wearing it because well you sort of becomes one of your friends doesn't it your jacket and I particularly like these Barber Beaufort jackets because they've got this big pocket in the back and this big pocket it's got zip on both sides zip on that side and a zip on this side and it goes big pocket all the way around your back and that pocket really is designed for putting stuff in your roadkill for example so and I can tell this is fresh fresh off the road you just gotta look at the eyes the eyes are nice and clean well, apart from that one that one's been that one's been chewed out but that one's nice and clean so there's dinner for me and the dog. But when I'm finished with that, I'll go in and I'll start. Uh, I've got a bit of sewing work to do. I carry a couple, I probably won't use these needles, but I carry a couple of needles on my bushcraft knife, uh, as most bushcrafters do. But you have got to use things every now and again, so. I'm just going to go in and just have a bit of a sewing do, just fix this zip up. I might darn some holes in this hat. And I've got <coughs> points wed through on my gaiters. I'll take this one off. There we go, we've got holes worn in the gaiters. That's where the that's where the two gaiters rub together. Depends which so there's there's a hole the same place on either side because there's no left and right gaiter, so sometimes this will go on the left leg, sometimes it'll go on the right leg, and it's where the two gaiters rub together. So I've got those holes to fix up as well. So that's what's on the agenda this morning. I've already, I've already washed the dog. Right, let's get in. Yes, I know what you were after. I want to get them reasonably clean because I'm going to re-wax them as well. And to re-wax them I'll just make a mixture of beeswax, probably paraffin rather than turpentine, and maybe some Vaseline in it as well. Just to keep just to keep the beeswax a little bit maybe stop it from going all white right then so here we are we've washed the gaiters which means I'm probably going to have to re-wax them as well although they didn't need re-waxing but that's just in the general maintenance scheme of things and now we're going to repair the two holes on each gaiter 
so that's four patches we're going to do all in all and four patches is going to take me a while in fact it would be cheaper for me to do overtime at work and buy two or three extra pairs of gaiters but that's not the point the point is we've got sewing kit which we might need to use in an emergency we might need to just make something because we want to make something so if you've got the kit you should use it otherwise you might as well not have it so we're going to patch these up first thing we're going to need is some patching material and I've got I've already ripped it off I've got an old coat here which is a waxed cotton coat but it's a cheap one it's not a it's not a barber jacket and it's past its it's shown very good service but it's now past its best I've done a number of repairs on it uh, where the pockets all torn away there where the sides torn away so it's seen better days and I now just keep it just to use bits and pieces off it to do repairs on other things so that's the material off that coat there's plenty of material there I'm just going to use that now I just need sewing equipment now I've got a, on me um, bushcraft knife I've got two uh, needles in there but these are quite big needles they're just for basic uh, botchit repairs so I've got a, another little sewing kit here it hasn't got a great deal of stuff in it but uh, I've got linen thread there which is again too coarse too thick for what uh, uh, for this job but there is also some much thinner stuff wrapped around this candle it's not the right colour it's brown that's close enough and then matches we don't need them I've got in there a, a thimble which I probably won't need for this material the needle will probably go through easily enough I've got some beeswax which is just useful for running your thread through stops it jamming so much and it can help with waterproofing and then I've got a a few pins just for holding patches in place the other thing I'm going to need for cutting my patch out and for maybe tidying up the around the holes of the uh, uh, for the repair is some scissors and these are just a little scraggy pair of scissors but they'll do the job the sort of thing I've got in the dog's first aid kit these scissors and uh, that's about it really good lighting of course so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut small patches sew the small patch on with a back stitch and then just go around the edge of the hole you'll see as we go through it with a, a whip stitch and I'll show you what that is when we get started but sewing's not hard I mean it's just sewing isn't it but there are different there's a lot more to everything when you start looking into it and there's a lot of stitches for certain jobs just like there's knots for certain certain jobs so we'll start with this big hole here big hole here we'll get this one out the way what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to tidy up all the straggly edges around the hole so all them straggly ends is going to serve no useful purpose so that's that then we can have a look at the true size of the hole and we can cut a piece of material off to suit and it doesn't matter if this at this stage you might as well cut it too big it doesn't really matter as long as there's enough material to cover the hole and to overlap to
stick it on with that and trim this back later on. It doesn't need to be anywhere near this big but as I say I can trim it back later on. I'm going to do it on the underside, stick it through the underside. Some glue would be handy here, you can get spray on type glues. Uh, I remember when I was in the army once, I was on parade and uh, <laughs> the sergeant major noticed I'd made a repair to my combat jacket but what I'd done is I'd stuck a patch on with Evo stick and he was not at all impressed but uh, I, I didn't sew it up myself we had a tailor um, on the camp so I took it to her and she, she, she sewed it up for me So I'll be honest, I don't do a lot of sewing. I do a little bit of sewing, but and I, do, I, I have learnt to use the sewing machine as well. Um, but I, I just think it's a useful skill. So, like many things, I just like to uh, sort of keep me hand in, not worry too much about the um, the right and the wrong way of doing things. I can see me sticking these, sticking myself with these pins. So I do think some of this spray-on glue or some or these iron-on sticky things would be a good idea. Right. So now I'm going to use some fairly thin thread. And then my next challenge will be threading the needle. And the thread in the needle. You want a nice white background and a steady hand. And it's good to uh, to actually use your sewing kit because you might have needles that are too small for the thread you intend to use. which is why I've got large needles on the bushcraft knife because you might, your thread might be the inside of, uh, of paracord. Right now some people tie a knot in the end of the end of the thread but uh, I don't tie a knot in the end of the thread. Starting off from the back side just starting off anywhere starting off anywhere Putting a, pulling through, pulling through the thread. Obviously, leave a bit. You don't want it coming out the end. So if I had a knot in the end there now, it would stop at the knot. And the thread is double. It's double thread. Now I've gone through the top. We've just got to be careful it doesn't all tangle up. And then you can, oh, I nearly lost it there. You can just tie it off here in a reef knot, which is what I'm going to do. Wrap it round once. So that's one knot, one overhand knot, then another overhand knot on the top of that. If you do it left over right, right over left to get a reef knot or it doesn't really matter. So 
So now we have tied it off and now we can start sewing. So I'm doing a back stitch. So what I'm doing is I'm going a big distance on the back. I'll bring you in. Right, so I've got the finished article here, the first patch, and I didn't do a close-up on this because I realised it would be hard for you to actually follow the stitching I was doing. But not to worry, I've got a plan to show you the stitching now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that this paper is my gaiter, or it's the piece with the hole in it, so let's just put a hole in it. Uh, so there's the gator with a hole in it and this is the patching material here so there is my patch Could that do with being a bit bigger I think it probably could. I'll just take a slightly bigger piece. It's not much bigger but it'll do. <clears throat> so with these two pieces of paper I'm going to demonstrate the stitch I did. The back stitch and the whip stitch. There's the patch. And for this I'm going to use the large needle out of my um, bushcraft kit. I've got two needles in here. A straight needle and a bent needle, slightly bent. Uh, I won't take that one out. So for the demonstration purposes I'm not really going to use the fine needle and the fine thread. I'm going to use the coarse needle and no expense spared. I'm going to use some linen thread. And what we're going to demonstrate first off is the back stitch. So <clears throat> this is an easy needle to thread even though the thread is coarse. It's just twisted at the end, that's why it wouldn't go straight through. So I like to double my thread, so what I do is I find both ends, put both ends together. In fact what we're going to do on this one as well is we're going to knot it. We're just going to put a straight half hitch in the, in the end. Uh, simple knot. You could do another knot on top of that to make it bigger if you thought it was going to pull through which is what I might do. There we go so we've got a very big knot in the end. So we're going to start off with the back stitch around the edge of the patch. So I'm going to go through from the bottom so the knots on the back of the material. We can pull it up to the knot and I'll just go back on myself with a short stitch. So this is the outside of the material, this is the bit you're going to see. And this is what you've got to be careful of when you're sewing, especially when the thread's a little bit kinked like this. This has been wrapped around this card, so it's got little kinks worked into the thread. So now we start off with the back stitch. On the underside we do quite a long distance. Bang. I might be over exaggerating slightly just to get it done quickly. So 
so we've come through and then we go back on ourselves just a little distance and that means we can pull the thread fairly taut without rucking up the material so I'm just going to carry on doing that so it's like three steps forward tension it up a bit and one step back three steps forwards and one step back making sure it's pulled reasonably firm so you get the swing of it and I'm just going to do that all the way around the outside of the patch now what you can do as well is every now and again you can sort of tie it off with a couple of half hitches or something just to make sure that because that thread might on the outside get worn away and break the whole lot doesn't undo so every now and again you can tie off your thread so this then is the simple back stitch so <clears throat> As you can see it's fairly neat on the visual side and on the back it's not quite so neat but reasonably neat. Now I haven't got enough thread to go right to the end but uh, and I'm not going to get more thread out so what you would do if you ran out is just tie it off with a couple of half hitches. Snip that off. Now if this was material it would be a bit neater than this because I pull it a bit tighter but I don't want to pull it too tight because it's it's going to rip the paper. So that's our back stitch done then and if we wanted to at this stage we could we could trim the patch round if we wanted to trim the corners of the patch and then we'll start with our whip stitch so for that I'm going to need some more linen thread now if I was putting this linen thread into material then I would be very tempted just to run it across some beeswax I might do that a couple of times just to coat it in a bit of beeswax so off we go again then same procedure And these, these needles will take uh, the centre of paracord which is why I carry these needles in my, on my bushcraft knife. And we can put a couple of knots in the end just to make sure it isn't going to go through just to get that knot nice and big depending on where it is of course it might cause a nuisance if it's too big so now we're going to do the whip stitch and the whip stitch is so we're starting on the back again and we're coming through but we're just coming through the patch close to the edge just the patch close to the edge but then we're going down through both pieces of material 
but I'm going to start moving along a touch so I'm going down through now the main material and the patch and then I'm just going to carry on doing that all the way around through the patch to through just one layer down through both layers and I'm just going to carry on doing that again all the way around but every now and again I would tie off the thread so that if it breaks anywhere it doesn't come completely to pieces. This is, this is you could do this quite quick as long as it's not as long as the material's not getting rucked up on the back. So you get the gist of this. So I don't need to go on and on. But on my <coughs> and then of course when we get round or when we run out we just we just tie it off and and that's it, the job's essentially done. But what I've done on this one, on the on the actual repair, is I've then gone around with another whip stitch right on the outside of the patch. Because I, you know, I, I, the job's going to make these gaiters last twice as long as they would have otherwise lasted, and although, as I say, it's not economical to do it in terms of time and money, it's not purely for the time and money that you're doing it. It's for the experience of being able to use your tools when you might find that uh, money isn't going to be of any use to you. They're out in the wilderness somewhere. So that's that then. I've got three more patches to do, my zip to do, and the darning of my hat to do. So uh, I'll get on and I hope you've learnt something from it and maybe it's been a little bit enjoyable. I can't say sewing is, uh, <laughs> is, is something I find enjoyable, but it is nice to know that you can fix your gear. Right, I'll catch you when I catch you then.